All right, welcome back. Today we're going to run through our second video on Italy and the rise of fascism uh, by talking about what Benito Mussolini is ultimately going to do once he's in power. So we're going to start with uh, Mussolini's goals. Uh, first and foremost, he wants to increase Italian national pride that he feels was so harmed by uh, not only the losses in World War I, uh, but also the, the treaty settlements at the end of World War I. So to build an Italian national pride and to build that Italian unity that was lacking in the country. Remember we talked the other day about the divisions between North and South, between working class and, and upper classes, um, between secular and, and Catholic. Uh, so we wanted to bring more Italian unity to the state. He wanted to revise the war settlements. He thought that Italy was owed more out of the treaty settlements that ended the First World War. He wanted to dominate the Balkan region. Uh, he wanted to dominate the Mediterranean Sea, ultimately to, to rebuild what was once the Roman Empire, where, where the Roman Empire completely encircled the Mediterranean Sea. That's what Benito Mussolini wanted to put back together. Um, with regard to building the empire, um, he is looking for what, is, what we call living space or in Italian, uh, spazio vitale. We're gonna see the same thing with Japanese aggression and later German aggression as well. This desire to have like what Russia and, and the United States already had, plenty of wide open spaces that can be expanded for, for the Italian people and their production. Um, and he wants to do this in expansion, uh, not only in, in the Balkan Peninsula, but also in Africa, where Italy already has a colonial presence. Uh, to achieve these goals, he's looking for an improvement in the Italian economy. Um, and he's going to do this by a creation of what we call a corporate state and a drive towards autarky. Autarky is a, 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 a term that means having a self-sufficient economy, that you don't have to rely on any other nations uh, for economic assistance or, or trade goods, that you can really produce everything you need within your own state. Um, in Mussolini's corporate state, he sees all workers and employers working towards the good of the state, and he wants to eliminate class divisions. Uh, by this, he's going to like, for example, we talked the other day about the banning of labor unions, because labor unions, in his mind, will bring division between the workers and the ownership class. Um, corporations in this Italian uh, corporate state will be strictly regulated by the government. But these land and economic reforms that Mussolini has are ultimately going to fail in making uh, Italy an economic power. And that's exacerbated by the coming of the, uh, the Great Depression. With regard to foreign policy of Benito Mussolini's government in the 1920s, got a number of incidents, and we can see early on Mussolini's aggressive nature. In 1923, there's an Italian uh, official who's killed on a Greek island called Corfu, um, and, uh, and Benito Mussolini is going to send an army to invade Corfu. The League of Nations is going to step up and order a withdrawal of, of the Italian forces in Corfu, and this is one early example of the League of Nations actually doing what it was intended to do, you know, maintain peace through collective security. Um, but, um, but we can see early on Mussolini's aggressive nature. In 1924, he's going to move to seize a disputed uh, town called Fiume, uh, which was held by Yugoslavia, but Italy uh, had, a, had majority Italian citizens. Uh, he's going to seize Fiume, which is going to uh, uh, certainly, again, show that aggressive nature. In 1924, he's going to enter into a treaty agreement with Albania um, called the Treaty of Friendship. And Albania will essentially become a protectorate of Italy. Um, and uh, this is going to ruffle some feathers because, because we've got a, a bit of a rivalry that's going to grow between Italy and France. Uh, France had an alliance with uh, Yugoslavia and some other nations in Eastern Europe called the Little Entente. And seeing Italy begin to encroach on these territories is going to definitely make France nervous. In 1925, Mussolini is going to play the internationalist game. Um, he's going to sign the Locarno Treaty in 1925. Uh, um, and, and after this is signed with other Western European powers like Britain and, and France and Germany, um, there's going to be newspaper writings about the spirit of Locarno and how this European world is getting put back together. The Locarno Treaty brings a confirmation of Western European borders that were signed after uh, the Treaty of Versailles. But it still leaves Eastern Europe um, up for some uh, debate and negotiation. 
Mussolini will also sign on to the 1928 Kellogg Briand Pact, uh, this this agreement, international agreement to, to not use war as a means to solve your your disputes. But all the while he's playing this internationalist game, he's also showing his aggressive side. He's supporting right wing movements in uh, in Germany. Uh, he's agreeing to train German pilots in Italy in violation of the Treaty of Versailles. So he is certainly showing really two sides here, one part internationalist, but one part extreme right wing nationalist. And um, of course, he is going to have as his goal building this empire. And to do that, he's got to expand his reach and he's got to build his military. So uh, Benito Mussolini is going to support independence movements in French Morocco. And this should ring a little bell to, to Germany's influence in French Morocco, trying to spark independence movements there. Um, and, and obviously, Benito Mussolini does not care about Moroccan independence. He just wants the French out of North Africa so he can expand his, his holdings in North Africa. Um, he's going to suppress uh, revolts and pushes for independence uh, in Italian Libya in North Africa. Um, despite his agreements to disarm that came after World War I, he's going to promise to build an air force that will blot out the sun, so many planes in the sky that you can't see the sun anymore. Um, and, and we come to 1929 with the onset of the Great Depression, just like we talked about with Japan, that is going to result in even more aggression from the Italian state and even a, a greater push to expand and, um, and build this autarkic economy that Mussolini desired. We'll see you next time when we talk a little bit about the, uh, the growth of Nazi Germany.